another important aspect of your trip to Belize, uh, clothing. Um, you know, kind of starting at the top, you know, definitely your lucky fishing hat. Um, can be baseball cap style, uh, can be, you know, wider brimmed. Um, anything just kind of help, you know, keep the sun off your, your face and your ears, uh, as well as um, help with glare when you're seeing fish. Big part of uh, saltwater fly fishing, you know, Belize or anywhere, uh, is going to be able to see the fish. Um, so you definitely want something with a dark underbrim. Um, you know, the, if your lucky hat has a tan one, that's totally fine. But definitely uh, the darker the under the brim is, the better. Um, you know, the, the big, you know, cowboy style, straw style hats are, are great. Uh, I find that they're kind of a challenge to travel with um, unless you like wearing them in the airport. Um, but uh, that's why I kind of more opt more for, you know, more baseball style caps. Um, you know, down to, you know, buffs, uh, buffs are another great way to kind of help, you know, keep you protected from the sun. Uh, if you were ever down there and the bugs were really bad, you know, something to keep bugs from buzzing in your ear, you know, buffs are great. Um, you can get them wet and put them on. Um, you can throw one in the cooler. Uh, so, you know, halfway through the day, you pull a buff out that's been sitting in a cooler with ice in it. Uh, Pretty nice when it's you know 85 90 degrees and the sun's beating down on you um, other sun protection stuff you know sun gloves um, are definitely important um, you know just keeping sun off the back of your hands uh, that's going to be the one spot that's you know you kind of have to be pretty diligent with sunscreen if you are going to be there um, so gloves are always a nice uh, option just to help with that um, shirts you know sun hoodies they're always great you know super lightweight um, they've got a hood on them, so, you know, that'll help, you know, kind of in lieu of buff. Some people wear them with buffs, um, but lightweight, quick drying. Um, I tend to go with lighter colors, you know, anything. I probably wouldn't go any darker than this, you know, something that's, you know, this or a white or, uh, you know, kind of a saltwater camo, blue gray, um, you know, lighter greens. Uh, that's going to be the way to go. Uh, one heat. You know, wearing a black T-shirt uh, on the, the the bow of the boat, uh, you're going to be getting warm. Um, and it's also, you know, you kind of think about the colors that you see down there. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to go with a full, you know, cloud camo or saltwater camo pattern, um, but you definitely don't want to have the bright, you know, melon-colored shirt that, you know, people see you from a mile away. Well, the fish might see you from a mile away too. So definitely, you know, more muted colors. Um, you know, these sun, sun hoodies are great. Uh, I personally, you know, prefer kind of, you know, the classic button-down shirt. A um, couple reasons. Um, probably first and foremost is versatility. Uh, I can wear this, you know, on the plane down there um, and look good and, and not have to worry about, you know, raising too many eyebrows on while you're dressed like the, uh, you know, a guy coming out of the Sahara uh, going through the airport. Um, they also typically have pockets, which, um, you know, if you're hopping out of the boat, you throw a little fly cup with some flies, you know, roll a tippet, extra leader. Um, you can put it in there, you know, if you're doing a little short walk on some tailing bonefish or some tailing permit, uh, that way you know, you're not having to carry your whole bag. You just kind of take the, the essentials and you can throw them in there. A lot of the shirts now also have, you know, sunglass wipes on the, the inside of the, uh, the hem there, um, which is great, you know, keeping your glasses clean. Um, you know, I like to, uh, pop my collar when I'm down there. Um, I think that works, you know, just like a buff, you know, if you're getting hot, you know, throwing that collar up is just another little bit of sun protection. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, button down shirt, lightweight. Um, you know, if it is going to be a cotton shirt, like a, uh, you know, like a Patagonia Island hopper shirt, uh, I love those. Um, but definitely you want to make sure it's a lightweight, uh, shirt so that, you know, if it gets wet, it dries quick. Um, you know, it'll wick moisture as you're sweating. Um, stuff with venting is always nice, you know, back on the yoke, uh, just to help kind of keep you cool and, and looking cool. Uh, down to shorts. Uh, I typically bring a couple pairs of shorts uh, when I'm going, you know, probably two pairs of shorts, uh, and then I can rotate through them. You know, you don't need to bring a separate pair of shorts for every single day. Um, you know, you're at a fishing lodge, everything down there is super casual. Um, so having something, you know, lightweight, that's, uh, you know, going to dry quick. So if you are hopping in the water, uh, it's going to breathe. You know, if you're, you know, staying on the bow of the boat, the wind's going to help keep things moving. And um, 
couple pairs of shorts, and then, uh, you know, from the shorts down to, you know, lightweight fishing pants, um, lighter the better. Uh, these are great, uh, you know, not only while you're fishing and you're, you're on the boat, um, they're great, you know, around the lodge. You know, a lot of times places down there, uh, if the bugs come out, they tend to come out around dinner time. So, you know, if you're eating outside uh, or some sort of open air situation at the lodge, uh, having some pants to kind of help keep your legs protected uh, is always good. Um, you know, sun protection, you know, people always forget, you know, the backs of your legs. Uh, and, you know, if you're wearing pants, you don't have to worry about that. Um, I would say if you're in a spot, you know, like the turn of a toll where you might be waiting quite a bit, uh, I personally would, would stick with shorts. Um, I, I just, I feel like you move faster through the water. Uh, some of the guys who have opted to, you know, kind of the Seychelles style wearing tights under your shorts, um, just to help with the sun. But, but I kind of go, you know, either shorts, you know, pants around the lodge, uh, you know, a lot of the pants, you know, they're pretty neutral. So they're versatile traveling, you know, wearing these in the airport. Um, you know, you don't, you know, put off the, the hardcore fishing vibe as much. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great to have pieces that, you know, serve double duty. So a pair of pants, a couple pairs of shorts, a couple shirts. And, uh, you know, I like to really focus on stuff that, um, crosses over. So you can wear it in the airport, you can wear it, uh, fishing. Um, you know, that's important if a bag doesn't make it. So having, you know, an extra pair of shorts, underwear, shirt, maybe, in your carry-on bag. Um, if, if you were checking a bag and it didn't come, having stuff that you can just go right on the water the next day while the bag gets sorted out um, and you're not you know, stuck there in a pair of Wranglers uh, and trying to go flats fishing. The stuff that gets overlooked is a rain kit. So good pair of rain pants, lightweight, easy to pack. Uh, that's gonna be important to have. Um, same thing, rain jacket. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be anything super heavy duty, you know, three layer Gore-Tex or anything like that, but, you know, good waterproof jacket, um, that, you know, tropical storms come through, uh, you get afternoon squalls, uh, you know, that type of stuff, you know, you've got something to throw on, keep you dry, uh, keep you comfortable. Um, if you sit through a rainstorm and the guide says, all right, let's move to this next flat and it's 15 minutes away, uh, and you're soaked to the core, uh, that's a, that's a chilly ride, even even in the tropics. Um, I like using them if you have a little bit of a cool morning, you know, boat rides out, um, you know, some of the places that maybe have a longer boat ride to start the day, uh, having, you know, full kit can be a nice way to go. Um, that way, you know, if it's a, you know, 30, 40 minute run to get the day going, and maybe you're crossing some big water, you're getting splashed, uh, you've got something that's, you know, gonna keep you dry and, and comfortable so that when you do get fishing, uh, you're not starting the day, you know, soaked in salt water. Um, so good rain kit is essential to have as well. Sunglasses, you know, definitely a couple pairs is good. Um, you know, get something that's, that's high quality polarized, um, whether it's, you know, Smith or Costa or Bahio, um, you know, some, something reputable, you know, I'd say it's probably not the best idea to go get the, the gas station polarized sunglasses for your, your flats trip, your, your flats fishing trip. Um, you know, different lens colors, uh, you know, probably the most important and versatile is going to be kind of an amber lens. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you know, an amber based, copper based, um, for, you know, bright light, you know, 90% of your fishing scenarios. Um, I like a, an amber or copper base. Uh, and then definitely, you know, a low light, you know, kind of a, a yellow um, sunrise sunset type lens um, early in the morning, cloudy day, uh, having a, a light that's going to work better with the light that's being given to you. Uh, you know, the different lens colors are important. Um, you know, and then, you know, multiple pairs. So, you know, if it one breaks, you know, if you say your, your copper lens breaks or something happens to it, gets really scratched, you drop it uh, off the boat, um, you've got a backup pair. Uh, and then uh, as you're picking them out, uh, I really like to, you know, you go and you know, put them on the shop, you know, or, or glass store, wherever you're at and, and go outside. You know, it's hard to get a gauge on what the lens is going to do under, you know, store lighting. So go outside, you know, put the different lenses on. Um, see what works well, 
uh, and and you know these are the colors that I'd say most people use. Uh, I know some people that use like a gray or a blue lens. Um, some of it's going to depend on on your eyes and how you see things through them. You know, I know people that wear a sunrise lens all day long and they love it. Uh, it gives me a headache. You know, my eyes are a little bit more sensitive to light, so having a darker lens I feel like works better for me. Um, and and backup pairs. So, you know, I've got you know these two plus another pair, um, just to to kind of cover all the bases. Uh, you know, as far as you know, losing them, breaking them, scratching them, you know, anything like that. Uh, extra lens cloths are super important um keeping your glasses clean while you're out there you know you're running through the water and you're getting spray off the boat or you know you're in the water you know with a big tarpon that you caught and you're getting that picture and um you're getting back in the boat and having extra stuff to wipe them and keep them clean um, is is really important and then uh, if you really want to go overboard i have a you know these are my kick around sunglasses like these are the ones i travel in get back to the lodge, I put my fishing ones away, and then I've got ones that, you know, if you're screwing around on the beach with, you know, hermit crab races or chicken drops or, or all the fun stuff that you could be doing down there, you're not worried about your glasses getting ruined. Um, so just, you know, being able to see the fish is, is really, really important. And um, I would go heavy on making sure that you're in good shape to see them the, the whole time you're down there.